We're in the fourth Sunday now of this series called True Virtues. And of course, pastor has been you know, preaching three Sundays, so big shoes to fill. Uh, but when he asked me, I was slightly nervous about finishing a series that he started, but still, then he asked me, could you please speak about the virtue of gratitude? And I went, oh yeah, oh yeah, this is one of my favorite subjects, so I'm happy and honored to share the word of God with you guys today. So why don't we start straight away? If you have your Bible or your version app, would you just look up Psalms 100, and we're going to start right there. And the initial foundational truth that I need to communicate as the kind of the foundation of the rest that I'm about to say is this, gratitude is the door to God's presence. Gratitude and thanksgiving is the door to God's presence. And we read this so clearly in Psalms 100 and verse four. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Enter with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is how we enter into God's gates. It's how we enter into God's house. And you know, if you wanna have a, have a conversation with someone or fellowship with someone, it really helps if you're both in the same house, right? <laughs> You could have a limited conversation, a limited fellowship, if one is in the house and one is outside, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be a bit strange. You have to scream at the top of your voice. You'll have a hard time hearing what the other person is saying. Sometimes you will see a glimpse of that person, maybe through a window. And actually that's exactly how mo many Christians relate to God. They said, oh, I wish I could hear God's voice a bit clearer. I wish I could feel God's presence a bit stronger. Well, maybe the problem is you haven't entered through his gates. When you come to him, the first thing you say is help. But it doesn't say we enter into his gates by screaming help. It says we enter into his gates through gratitude, through thanksgiving. And then once you've entered, you can say help if you want or if you need. But that's not how we enter. We enter through gratitude. We enter God's presence with thanksgiving. So every time you pray, start with thanksgiving. Every single day, start with thanksgiving. I was almost being po poetical right there. Every single prayer you pray, start with thanksgiving. Every single day, start with thanksgiving because that's how we enter into the presence of God. Which leads us to the second truth we need to realize about gratitude and thanksgiving. Gratitude brings freedom. Gratitude brings freedom. Because with gratitude, you enter into the presence of God and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is Freedom. So gratitude brings an element of freedom. Spiritual freedom, emotional freedom, relational freedom, even physical freedom. The Bible speaks about this repeatedly. And out of all the stories in the Bible that exemplifies how gratitude and thanksgiving brings freedom, I wanna retell the story of Jonah, the prophet Jonah who's got his own book in the Old Testament. Now, Jonah was a prophet whom God asked to go to a certain city called Nineveh, which is actually the present-day city of Mosul in Iraq, the former ISIS stronghold, if you remember. And uh, Jonah didn't want to go. He didn't like the city, didn't like the people. So he went the opposite way. And long story short, he ended up in a boat and he was thrown overboard and he ended up inside a fish for three days. That's a whole new level of problems right there. I respect that you have problems, I have problems too, but that's a whole new ball game in the existence of problems, okay? Actually, I hear sometimes people referring to this story and take it as a proof that the Bible is not true because they said there is no fish big enough to swallow a guy and have him inside of it for three days. And I go, hey, we're talking about God here, the creator of heaven and earth, right? You think if God needs a fish to swallow a guy, that God will go, oh no, I don't have a fish big enough. What am I gonna do? God could create a new fish just for that purpose, or he can enlarge an existing fish. He can go, hey Nemo, hold on. 
because <laughs> I'm going to enlarge you by like a million temporarily so you can swallow a guy and have him inside of you for three days. For God, nothing is impossible, amen? So anyway, yeah. So here's Jonah inside the belly of these fish, th this fish. That's the most horrible piece of circumstance you can even imagine. But let's read what Jonah is doing inside the belly of the fish. It says in Jonah chapter two, verse nine, but I will sacrifice to you with a voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So even in the belly of the fish, Jonah gives thanks to God. Not because of his circumstances, but in his circumstances. It's a big, big, big difference. And because Jonah down there in the bottom of the sea, inside the fish, gives thanks, he enters into the presence of God. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Look what happens. So the Lord spoke to the fish and vomited Jonah onto dry land. Praise God. Thanksgiving brings freedom. Thanksgiving brings deliverance. And I've seen this happening so many times in my life and in my family. Let me tell you a story from this was a long time ago. My daughter Evelina was just five years old at the time. And we were in my car and she was in the back seat strapped to her car kid's seat. I'm sure there's a better English word for that, but you understand what I'm getting at. So she was back there and I was driving and I was driving home to get a document and then we would be on our way. And um, you know, as I drove up to our driveway, see at the time we lived in a house that I actually built myself, I'm very proud of that. Uh, and, and it was on a hill. So the driveway was kind of sloping so every time I parked, I needed to make sure that the, you know, the gear is in, in parking mode and the, the emergency brake is pulled and everything. So I made sure of that. Then I turned to Evelina back in the back seat and I said, hey girl, I'm just gonna run in and get a document. You just sit there and, and uh, I'll be back in a minute, okay? I got a thumbs up from my five-year-old. I ran out of the car, ran up to the door, got the key out just as I was about to put the key in the door. I heard the most horrible crashing sound behind me. And I turned around and the car was not in the driveway anymore. It had rolled backwards out in the street, crossed the street, went straight through the fence of my neighbor's garden and was now parked inside my neighbor's garden. But Evelina was standing on the driveway, exactly where I parked the car. I ran up to her and I knelt and I said, Evelina, what happened? And she said, well, dad, you were gone for so long. <laughs> it's been like eight seconds, okay? That's what I try to tell my wife later on. It was like eight seconds. You were gone for so long. So I was just sitting in the back seat going, I wonder how that emergency brake really works. So she unbuckled herself and crawled to the front seat, put the gear in neutral and let go of the emergency brake. I got a very clever five-year-old there. <laughs> But then I asked her, but, but the car must have gone backwards immediately. How did you get out of the car? Because even if she managed to open the door, the car going backward, the door would have crushed her. And she was standing at the exact same spot where I parked the car. And she looked at me and said, well, dad, an angel lifted me out. And she shared her story about how she let go of the emergency brake. And immediately it was like time stopped. And she saw this angel coming into the car, grabbed hold of her, carried her carefully out of the car and put her gently down on the driveway. And when I heard that, first of all, I honestly have to say, say okay, angel, if you were busy getting my daughter out of the car, could you have stopped the car? <laughs> I'm so sorry, that's horrible. That's horrible. I didn't think that at all. I didn't think that at all. I was just amazed by the fact that God intervened to save my daughter from this trauma. And I remember that night as Maria and I, my wife and I, was kneeling and just giving thanks to God. God spoke to me. And it was one of those rare occasions where I almost could hear his voice audibly inside of me. And he said, you have no idea 
how many attacks of the enemy that was sent out toward you and your family that fell down to the ground even before you knew about them because of your thanksgiving. And I'll never forget that. With that, I'm not saying that if you've suffered uh, tragedies or hard times in your family, I'm not saying that that is because you haven't thanked God enough. That it doesn't work that way. This is a broken world and we don't know why things happen. But I do believe that if you just keep thanking God and keep thanking God, sooner or later, freedom will come. Sooner or later, freedom will come. Sooner or later, that fish is gonna spit you out on dry land if you just keep thanking God because gratitude brings freedom, amen? This moves us over to my next point. Next truth regarding gratitude. Gratitude is a daily choice. Gratitude is a daily choice. And to illustrate this truth, why don't we talk about Paul and Silas and the story found in the book of Acts chapter 16. Now Paul and Silas were two disciples who set out to do exactly what Jesus asked them to do. He asked them to preach the gospel and to pray for people, and this is exactly what they did. And because of that, they were beaten with rods. Because of that, they were arrested and put into the inner cell of a jail. Because of that, they were chained up and their feet was fastened to the stock. And um, of course, they could have sat there and uh, had a lot of question marks to deal with. They could have said, we did what Jesus asked us to. How come all these things happened to us? And they could have created a grudge and bitterness and disappointment and all kinds of things. But instead, they choose to do something completely different, praise God. We read in the book of Acts chapter 16, but at midnight, at the darkest hour, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. So they were loud. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. This is a great example of the fact that you can never fully control your circumstances but you can always fully control your attitudes. You can never be in full control of whatever happens to you, but you can always have full control regarding the attitudes with which we respond to your circumstances. Paul and Silas makes a choice. Even though we suffer, even though our bodies hurt, and even though we don't really understand the situation, yet we will worship, yet we will give thanks, we will stay in an attitude of gratitude. And the beautiful thing with this story also is that their decision to respond to all these trials with thanksgiving led to the release of themselves, but not only them, it affected everyone around them. Because it said not only did their chains come come off and not only did, did their prison door open up, but every chain in the prison and every prison door in the prison were opened up, meaning When you and I choose an attitude of gratitude, it will not only affect you, it will affect everyone around you. Your gratitude will affect your family. Your gratitude will affect your workplace or your school or the people around you, your neighborhood, amen? So let's bring freedom into our communities. Let's bring freedom into our families. Why, how? By choosing gratitude so that we can enter constantly into the presence of God to release freedom, amen? I want to tell you about my grandmother. I was blessed with a a wonderful grandmother, a very godly woman who loved Jesus with all her heart. She were living in in the same time, uh, same same town as my family, so I I visited her her a lot when when growing up. You got candy there? (laughs) Cookies and stuff? And um, at the very last phase of her life, she was in her mid-90s, she had a stroke which left her uh, without the ability to speak. She could no longer speak for the last few months of her life. Apart from one thing, she could say one thing up until her dying day. She could say thank you. She could say thank you. 
And I remember one of the last, yeah, this was actually the last time I, I saw her. I went to see her in her house and I opened the door carefully because I didn't know if she was awake or asleep. And I could hear her voice inside the bedroom. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I walked into the bedroom and I walked straight into the presence of God. And there she was, my little tiny grandmother, lying in her bed, eyes closed, big smile on her face, hands lifted. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just lying there enjoying the presence of the Lord. And then she saw me and she went, ah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I sat down and took a little tiny hand in mine. She looked at me and she said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I looked back at her and I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I made up my mind at that point. And when it's time for me to go, that's how I wanna go. That's how I wanna go, with that attitude, with that mindset, with that element of gratitude alive in my heart. But you see friends, that did not come by accident. It came through a series of repeated choices to choose gratitude and choose thanksgiving. My grandmother didn't have an easy life. She lived through both world wars and she had to struggle a lot in life, but daily she chose gratitude. And because of that, she ended up in this beautiful spot right at the end of her life. And she was just ready to go straight into heaven because in her life, there was the same attitude and atmosphere that she would meet in heaven, an atmosphere of gra gratitude and thanksgiving, amen? And this leads me over to the last thing I wanna share with you guys regarding gratitude and thanksgiving. We've said that gratitude is the door into God's presence. We said that gratitude brings freedom, but, and also the gratitude is a daily choice. And my final truth I wanna to communicate to you as we speak about gratitude is this, choosing gratitude means letting go of something else. Choosing gratitude means letting go of something else. You know why? Because gratitude and grudges cannot coexist. One will kick out the other and it's up to us to choose what we meditate upon, what we let go of and what we want to keep in our lives. If you wanna live a life in gra of gratitude, you need to let go of certain things. Maybe that bitterness against your parents or that, that grudge against your pastoral leader or maybe that disappointment toward God maybe because he didn't answer your prayer at that specific occasion. Now people, you need to understand something about God answering prayer. God has promised to always answer your prayers. It's just that sometimes the answer is no. So sometimes he says yes, and we love when he do that. And then sometimes he says yes, but not now. Okay, you got it right, but you got the timing wrong. Sometimes he actually says no. Even Jesus got a no in the Garden of Gethsemane. He honestly prayed, Lord, if this can, can be all taken away from me, if there's another way than the suffering and the cross, could we have it that way instead? And he got a no. But you see, when God says no to your prayer, it means always that there is something better in store for you. He's got something better, better further down the road. And because of that no in Gethsemane, we are here today. Thank God we are. We are saved and we are forgiven and we are righteous and we are restored and we are the sons and daughters of God. All because of that no in the Garden of Gethsemane. So no is not a bad thing, amen? <laughs> I was on Facebook the other week and you know, scrolling through all these names and, and profile pictures. All of a sudden I stopped because I recognized the name, but I couldn't really place it. And I realized this was a woman and I realized, oh, she, oh, it's her. She used to be a girl that I was madly in love with when I was 16, 17. I clearly remember it all came back to me now. I was praying fervently <laughs> to God that she would become my girlfriend and later my wife. I was praying so hard. And then now this was like 35 years later, I look at her profile picture and I said, thank God for unanswered prayer. 
sorry, that's horrible. That's what I did. That, 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 that's not what I wanted to say. But thing is that God said, no. <laughs> sorry about how that came out. You see, God gave me a no. And to me, that hurt at that moment because I knew what I wanted. But God had something even better. And she was called Maria. And this year we celebrate our 34th anniversary of passionate, happy marriage. But still it might be that you hold grudges and you have disappointments and sometimes we hold on to them because there is a level of enjoyment actually. There's something in us that likes being angry at someone else. And we feel we have the right to be angry because that person gave me this comment on Facebook. So now I will stay angry and disappointment and bitter and hold grudges like forever. What we don't realize is that we hold on to these things. We cannot really see the blessing of gratitude. We need to let go of something to gain something that is even more precious. And I want to end with a story that happened to me the, <laughs> the other year. I was in Stockholm, which is the capital of Sweden. And uh, Stockholm is basically a lot of, of, of water and a lot of bridges, okay? So I was crossing this bridge in Stockholm. And as I was crossing the bridge, there was like a TV crew on the bridge. And as I passed by, they said, sir, sir, excuse me, uh, could you come by? And I came up and it turned out that this was a crew recording a commercial for an antivirus program for cell phones. So they were interviewing random people about how they use their cell phones and wanted to make a point out of the fact that, oh, my cell phone is so precious to me and so important, so it needs to be secured and protected by this antivirus program. So they said, would you mind answering a few questions about your cell phone on camera? I said, sure. So this guy started to speak to me, asking me questions. This was a few years ago, it's a different haircut. <laughs> So this guy just asked me questions about my cell phone and all that. How do you use it? How, pressure, how pressure, precious is it to you? And so on. Then all of a sudden, this guy asked me, if I give you 2,000 euros, that's 2,500 US dollars, would you throw your cell phone off the bridge and into the water right now? That was the stupidest question I've ever heard in my life. You can't be serious. The guy took out 2,000 euros, $2,500. And my mind just went like this. Because I was thinking, in what universe in this, is this anything else but a, an amazing offer? Because <laughs> I can buy a new cell phone for like 500 bucks and I can download the whole content from the cloud and I'll still have $2,000. So he said, will you do it? I said, yeah. So I threw my cell phone off the bridge <laughs> and into the water. I'm not making this up, guys. And I got $2,500. I got a new phone for 500, I downloaded the full content, went home to Maria and said, you have no idea what happened. I told her the full story. And she said, praise God, because I saw this new pair of shoes. <laughs> What I didn't realize is that after this whole recording, when I saw the final commercial, I'm not making this, you can find, you can Google it, it's out there. You can find it and see it on YouTube. What I didn't realize or know about is that they had asked the same, given the same offer to all these other people. And every single one said no. I was the only one who took the offer. Why? Because these guys were too much in love with what they already had and not ready to let go of it to gain something that is even more valuable and of higher value. Sometimes that is me, sometimes that is you. We hold on to stuff. We hold on to grudges, to disappointment, to bitterness and to anger, not realizing that if we just let it go, we throw it off the bridge and into the water. God is ready to introduce you to the blessing of thanksgiving, allowing you to enter into his presence daily, allowing you to experience a new level of spiritual freedom, emotional freedom, relational freedom, if you are making gratitude and thanksgiving your daily choice. 
And if you want to make that commitment right now, if you just want to pray with me saying, God, I want to do that. I want to let go of whatever I need to let go of. And I want to choose gratitude so that I can step into the presence of God even stronger and experience even more of freedom that, that gratitude brings. Why don't you just open up your heart right now and make that decision as we pray. Father, we just thank you so much for this wonderful spiritual principle that gratitude brings us into the presence of God and therefore gratitude brings freedom. Lord, we make up our minds right now that we will let go of anything that keeps gratitude out of our lives. Father, we throw uh, bitterness and disappointment and anger and, and, and uh, uh, grudges off the bridge and into the water. And we choose gratitude, Father, toward you, toward other fellow human beings. And we choose to walk in that freedom that gratitude brings. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can you guys tell thank Pastor guys. thank you? And I'm just, uh, I'm grateful that you had your phone backed up. Yeah. Uh, that's, that if you didn't have your phone backed up, that story wouldn't have been as good. No, that wouldn't have worked. No. Yeah. Thank I, you. I lost 24 hours, but it was worth it. Thank you for sharing the word today. Thank Can you. you guys tell Pastor again, thank you. And as you just continue today in an attitude of prayer, I just wanna say to you, my church family, I'm grateful for you. So grateful for you. I'm grateful for my bride our friendship. I'm grateful, Pastor, for um, your faithfulness to God and His Word and to share. I'm grateful to every single one of you that serve every single week, who love others by loving their children or by making people feel welcome, by um, discipling people in your small groups. I'm thankful for your prayers. I'm thankful for your generosity. I'm thankful that you invite other people to become a part of our family. And today I'm incredibly grateful that beyond a shadow of a doubt in Life Church locations and online, there are gonna be people who find freedom through the grace of Jesus Christ. Could you just continue to pray with me? Father, we ask that you would draw people by your grace through your son Jesus to know true freedom in Christ and we'll give you all the praise. As you're praying without looking around today or those of you watching online, uh, let me tell you about some amazing news. Uh, the good news is that our heavenly Father, God, he loves you so much. He loves you exactly as you are. If you find yourself feeling guilty or ashamed of things that you've done, thoughts that you've had, I wanna just remind you that there's nothing that you can do to cause God to love you anymore. And there's nothing you can do to cause God to love you even any less. He just loves you because that's who He is. But God doesn't want you in a place where you're hurting, broken, or far from Him. And the reality is that every single one of us, we've sinned against a holy God. You know it, you feel guilty, you feel ashamed, you know you've done some things wrong, you feel, you feel the guilt. The good news is that God loves you so much that He became one of you. In the person of His Son, Jesus, the one who never ever sinned, the Lamb of God, who laid down His life, who died in our place, and God raised Him from the dead so that anybody, and this includes you, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what you did way years ago in the past, doesn't matter what you did last night. When you call on the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, our God hears your prayers. He will forgive your sin. You'll find freedom like you've never known before and a reason to give God praise. At all of our churches or those of you watching online who say, I want His grace. All we're gonna do today is we're gonna step away from our old sinful life, we're gonna call on Jesus and He's gonna save you and make you new. Those who say, yes, I need His forgiveness. Today, I'm, I'm letting go of whatever I've, I, I, whatever I've been holding on to. I'm grabbing a hold of the grace of Jesus. Today, by faith, I surrender my life to Jesus. That's your prayer. Would you lift your hands high right now? Just say yes at all of our churches as we have people today calling out on Jesus. All of our churches, those of you online, just type in the chat, I'm giving my life to Jesus. Just type that right now, I'm giving my life to Jesus and I would be honored just to pray with you. Would you just pray aloud wherever you are, just pray, Heavenly Father, forgive my sins. Jesus, save me, make me new. I let go of my past and I cling to you. Fill me with your spirit so I could know you and serve you and follow you for the rest of my life. Thank you for new life. 
I give you mine. In Jesus' name, I pray. I know somebody's ready to give God some praise. You're full of gratitude, give Him thanks, give Him honor, worship Him today.